Pests beware, your fields have heroes. The Pests and Predators podcast is brought to you by Field Heroes and is powered by the Western Grains Research Foundation. Learn how beneficial insects fight pests and protect your crops. Visit fieldheroes.ca today. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Real Agriculture. Today, I am at the Allura Research Station catching up with Jake Moreau, OMAFA's Soil Management Specialist. Sir, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Awesome, awesome. Hey, I want to talk about cover crops today. Uh, you do a lot of work on cover crops, and we are standing in winter camelina, and we're going to talk a little about this particular crop. Before we start there, let's talk about cover crops. What's the most popular cover crop these days, and do we need to add some more cover crops to the list? Yeah, Vern, so <clears throat> the big cover crops in Ontario would be, you know, of course, red clover, uh, frost seed into wheat, uh, oats uh, uh, after wheat as well. Uh, but then cereal rye would be another big one that's just very versatile, can fit in lots of spots. So kind of those would be the big three in my mind. Um, but there's many other options out there to explore. Yeah. Winter camelina. Before we get into it uh, as a cover crop, tell us a little bit about the crop. Yeah, so winter camelina, it's a winter annual brassica. Um, there, there is a spring camelina as well, but uh, winter camelina, kind of, it's related to canola. Uh, it's an oil seed. It's got some kind of unique uh, properties of the oil, and it is grown on kind of minor acreage uh, in the Midwest, U.S., as well as in Western Canada. Uh, it's very much kind of an emerging crop, not a, a large-scale crop, but one that's got some interesting properties. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about it from a, a cover crop perspective here. I've seen nice growth here, um, nice ground cover, um, uh, probably a nice fit for soybeans. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's really kind of the, the niche here, the window that I'm exploring, as I've done a fair bit of work with cereal rye in the past. We know that we can get cereal rye established in, in many different conditions, even quite late into the fall. Um, but there's some, some downsides to cereal rye, uh, especially ahead of corn. Um, and so the reason why I wanted to explore winter camelina is that it is a crop that, uh, that has some potential to be seeded really as late as kind of mid-October. And to see if we could get some soil cover, like you say, some protection on soybean stubble that's not going to winter wheat that's going to go to corn the following year. Mm. Talk about uh, what you've seen now. Obviously, this was planted last fall. Um, you, you've got some cereal rye here. It's still, it looks really nice compared to cereal rye. Talk about what we're seeing. Yeah, so we, we, in this trial here, uh, um, we've got two seeding dates. So we've got what we're standing in right now is winter camelina that was seeded on October 4th. After soybean harvest, I think it was about the day after soybean, uh, soybeans were taken off. And then we had a, a mid-October seeding date for camelina as well. And the rye was seeded at that mid-October date uh, in, as well. So what we're seeing here, like you say, a really nice stand, very even. Uh, this was drilled. And uh, we're seeing that uh, we've got, you know, very kind of different growth habit. It's a very different plant uh, from rye. Uh, it's, it's a top root as opposed to a fibrous root system. It sets a rosette in the fall and then starts started bolting about a week to 10 days ago. And you can see here we've got about six to eight inches of growth. One of the things about uh, cover crops is taking them out. You talk about, you, know, you, get, some, you, you get some rapid breakdown from this crop. Yeah, so it, again, it differs a little bit from rye in that in that sense as well. They're both well controlled, but just by glyphosate. Um, winter camelina though has a narrower carbon to nitrogen ratio, uh, especially if you're a little bit delayed in termination. Say if you're in the mid-May, uh, often in that case you'd get rye that's you know maybe up to your thigh. Uh, camelina also can can bolt and get quite tall. Um, but it's going to have much more rapid breakdown and there's less concern there about tying up nitrogen. Yeah, what about uh, look, look, looking forward now, challenges and opportunities, uh, what do you want to learn, what do you need to learn about this crop this year? Yeah, so there is a lot to learn with uh, winter camelia, like any new, uh, new crop, or in this case cover crop, um, there's some many uh, positive attributes for it, especially ahead of corn, but we have had challenges. It's been a bit of a mixed bag so far in the last two seasons in terms of getting uh, uniform establishment. So couple of key considerations. One, it's a very small seed, so about 400,000 seeds per pound. Uh, so uh, it, it poses maybe a few more challenges for getting establishment should be seeded, uh, you know, quarter inch to half inch, uh, kind of through the grass seed box. It could be broadcast and then lightly incorporated as well. Um, so it, it's going to, it's going to potentially require maybe some, some tweaks there in terms of uh, equipment. It, um, it is sensitive to certain herbicides, uh, whereas rye can handle a lot of different herbicides, residual herbicides. Uh, this is particularly sensitive to group 2 herbicides and can even be sensitive to group 5 herbicides, the triazines, uh, in corn from the prior crop year. So things to watch there and things that we're learning um, kind of as we go here. Jake, I want to touch on a couple of things you talked about. Variability. I mean, obviously, we want a consistent stand. What happens uh, from a variability perspective? 
Yeah, so that's uh, been an interesting aspect to evaluating this winter Camelina in Ontario in the last two years. We're standing in a near-perfect stand here, seeded early October last year at Alora on, on a nice loam soil. Um, we ha have a number of on-farm sites, and really it's, uh, it's been quite variable yeah. in terms of what we've seen firsthand. In some cases, almost no stand come through, and in other cases, you know, something really nice like this. Yeah. And so, a number of factors come into play. One, it, again, newer crop to Ontario, we're learning about how late can you seed it. That could be a factor in terms of getting enough growth to get good overwintering. Um, Factor number two, soil type tends to like loamy or lighter textured yeah. soils and doesn't love wet feet. So that, that's a consideration for this, uh, this species. And then uh, residual herbicides, again, kind of looking at your herbicide program and, and being aware of that uh, and, and carryover issues can certainly impact this crop. Uh, and finally, you know, slug feeding yeah. on, uh, for no-tillers uh, can be a concern. They kind of like the brassicas. Mm -hmm. We've seen that with winter, can uh, winter canola and no-till uh, scenarios, and, and I suspect that that could be a concern here. So I've got a lot to think yeah. to watch out for in terms of variability. I want to talk quickly about the rooting system. Always a consideration when you're planting cover crops. Yeah, so pros and cons of different species. Cereal rye, a great uh, fibrous rooting system helps to hold soil helps to and a build uh, build soil structure camelina quite different uh, or more what we're used to thinking of in terms of brass because it's got a, a nice tap root uh, less in terms of an extensive fibrous root system but it's going to go go straight down and if you get some decent growth you got the potential to kind of push through some compacted layers with it final thing uh, you do have uh, a little bit of data here tell us what you're seeing here yeah so early early days in terms of uh, results but what we want to look at is uh, the impact on the following corn crop. Of course, we don't want to be hurting our corn yields with our cover crops. And uh, very early results from replicated trials on an on-farm site as well as a small plot site from last year, we found that a winter camelina was not having any negative effect on, on corn yield relative to just uh, no cover crop at all. So kind of neutral in that sense. And if it gets away from you, Relative to rye, where you know if you got camelina up to here and rye up to here, camelina is going to be what you yeah. want to plant into because it, again breaks down more easily. And we saw a neutral yield impact even when we were planting into you know late May, early June. Well, great stuff, J.K. Thanks for taking some time for real agriculture. Uh, we will uh, track you down in the future, see how you're doing. Hey, thanks for profiling the work, and uh, stay tuned because we'll have more data to come in the next year or two. Good stuff. Yeah.